So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl Varista Neze, and this is Nezeville. You see, eh, my dear brethren in the Lord, this place is not a buka. We do not sell jello fries here, so everybody may not like what is served. We give opinions on social issues, some of which may be sensitive, and positions are bound to differ. Divergent stance expressed in a civil manner are always welcome. But if you're incapable of expressing yourself logically and dispassionately without getting so engrossed in your emotions to start sounding the meaning, we will have no other option but to yank you off so you do not pollute our beautiful space. You see, eh? when this DNA madness started, I warned us. I warned us, but we didn't listen. I told us that the way we are going with this DNA, DNA bruhaha, <laughs> it is not okay. But you did not believe me. Now, the subject of DNA has now turned to a juicy conversation on social media to generate traffic and engagement. Some of which are true, many of which are cooked up stories on Twitter and TikTok that never happened. This whole madness started, I mean, became very much intense and pronounced when our darling mobile past. How the judge and jury of social media made the paternity of his child the missing puzzle to solve or uncover his murder. And everywhere we faced, we were seen, will me killed more bad, will me killed more bad, let her do DNA, DNA, DNA. Ah, ah. I was like, nobody is talking about the autopsy or the toxicology reports. Nobody is questioning the police why it's taking seven months to get a toxicology report. Nobody is emphasizing the importance of that toxicology and autopsy report to unravel the true cause gong, 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 of his death. No agitations for that. Instead, everywhere we go to, Wumi killed Mobad, DNA, DNA, DNA. I was like, wait, oh. The police has conducted a comprehensive preliminary investigation to uncover the death of this guy. And they revealed the commissioner of police himself, not to say he's one small policeman that you say Wumi has gone to bribe. The COP himself held a press conference and he informed the public that Mobad reacted to some injections that were administered by an unregistered nurse, which led to a chain of reactions that resulted in a seizure and eventually his death. No, 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 no. <laughs> We did not want to hear that one. That is not the reason. Do the DNA. It is Wumi that killed him. This matter was not a small matter. This matter caused a nationwide protest. Is it even nationwide? International wide. There was protest in New York, in Atlanta, different parts of the world. All public officers who had this file on their table were being very careful. Nobody wanted to appear compromised. Even the Senate was in on this case. Some people opened their mouth. Wow. Like this, my Ghanaian sister over here. And started saying, Wumi's mother is a policewoman. She is the one that influenced it. She was the one that influenced the Senate, the IGP, the Commissioner of Police, all the high ranking officers. Who is she in the police force? A constable? Now, as delicate as that case was, and the police officers in charge were all being careful, nobody wanted to be seen as a person that is jeopardizing the case. The police took their time and did their investigation, went through all recorded conversations, and came up with a list of suspects who they believe were either directly or indirectly involved in that man's passing. They arrested all of them. His wife was not considered a suspect. Neither was she arrested. She was called in for questioning, she gave her report, and she was allowed to go because she was not considered a suspect. The police also did not consider the need for a DNA as crucial or material to that case. Let me tell you, I am in the system. Nobody gets a court order as fast as the police. They can get it in less than 24 hours. If the police considered the correlation between that DNA report and unraveling the death of that guy, they would have obtained a court order to conduct a DNA before we can even wake up from our sleeps. But they did not meaning their investigation didn't suggest anything of that sort. But we were here on social media shouting <laughs> that she was sleeping with Mobat's enemy, Sam Larry. In fact, that child is Sam Larry's child. She is the killer. Do DNA. I have not deviated though. 
calm your nerves. We are getting somewhere. We are getting to the Messichino story. I have not forgotten. Calm down. I just want us to build on how this madness started. Okay, some people came up with the argument that Mobad in his voice notes said that if anything happens to him, he they should hold Wumi. It is Wumi that caused it. Okay, he said that. But few months before then, he had also said, he didn't just stop at saying verbally, he petitioned the commissioner of police of Lagos State, putting it in writing, seal and stamp, that if anything happens to him, they should hold this Samlari guy that has been beating him, tracking him, bullying him, assaulting him, that they should hold him all, that he's the one that caused whatever happens to him all. You see what Samlari did to my see? He does not have peace. Samlari will meet him at the studio, beat him, break his equipment, do everything to him. We did not pick this one that he said we should hold Samlari. It is the wife, husband and wife fighting, that we said yes. Bam! Mobat said we should hold the wife if something happens to him. We are not talking about the one that he said that we should hold the people that were bullying him. Oh, um, believe that one. The wife is the suspect. Do DNA. Even the bullies and the harassers. <laughs> hey God, I saw one of them on their Instagram stories the other day. I wanted to run mad. All the bullies and the assaulters have joined the bandwagon. <laughs> the socially convenient narrative and started shouting DNA. DNA is a must. DNA must be done. The same bullies. Okay, no. That is how me and these people we were fighting. What for what? Fire for fire. Verbatim for verbatim. Brimstone for brimstone. <laughs> DNA has now obviously become the most convenient socially fashionable easily acceptable narrative to project and if you want to win the hearts of millions on social media on facebook on instagram tiktok twitter and youtube just come out and advocate for dna and you watch people's knees go weak as they fall in love with you but if you want to get on their bad sides draw their attention to the fact that there are so many other factors that need to be focused on than DNA and boy oh boy you are the devil itself but I wasn't deterred because I for one am the kind of person that do not mind being the only one on one side of the divide even when the whole world is on the other I am not trying to make anybody like me I came on my channel and I told you guys that I do not understand this every Tom Dick and Harry fighting for DNA, harassing this woman to go and do DNA. Somebody will come today, somebody's father, I want to give you one million naira, but first produce DNA results before I help you. I want to dash you 500,000, submit your DNA to my email first. And I explained to you that you and I and members of the public do not have a right in the world, one shred of rights, to ask that lady to provide any DNA for us. There are two people who has the authority to make that demand and it is her husband and by order of the courts. Anybody can obtain a court order. The police can obtain a court order. Her father-in-law can obtain a court order. Any other person aside her husband can seek a court order compelling her to run the DNA test. Not you and I on social media. Just because we came out to protest about her husband's death does not make us in charge of her life or make or give us the authority to issue orders to her or run her activities. She doesn't owe us that. She may choose to do it discretionary, but it is not an obligation. This is by no way. I I am by no means vouching that the child belongs to her or the child belongs to him or the child belongs to anybody. I was not present when the genital meet and greet took place and I am no custodian of the private parts of other adults. The only child I can vouch for is the one that came out of my womb. But what I was trying to explain and what I still stand on is that nobody on the internet has a right to be bullying her and pressuring her to get DNA done. And some people were so mad. They were like, Neze, I used I like you, but now I don't I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. You have supported Batin, Neze. Why? You broke my heart. Some people came to my DM, private chatting me. Neze, can't you see that it is women that kills this boy? Oh, Neze, please see it. It is women that kills this boy, Neze. Why can't you see it? And in my mind, I thought to myself and said, you must be stark, raving, moving insane to think that you can compel me to accuse a widow 
of killing her husband or accuse anybody at all of murder when there are no facts within my disposal and I have checked and did not find any reason to infer so. So that is how DNA became a very juicy subject on the streets of our social media without them playing the genuine existence of paternity fraud and reports of paternity scams. It became lucrative for engagements to push out fictitious stories of DNA scams that never existed. And when the blogs break a story of a baby that was just born to a celebrity or to anybody at all, you go through the comments and you see grown ass men, matured men with pubic hair, sometimes women, indirectly trolling the child and demanding DNA is required. Especially if the child does not have a close semblance with the father. Oh my God. You see the comment section reeking of disrespect. DNA. Mogadu DNA for this your child. DNA needed. DNA required. And I shook my head. Now, popular gospel singer Mercy Chinwo and her dear husband, Pastor Blessed, got married on the 13th of August 2022, about two years ago. God blessed their marriage shortly after, and one year after they got married, they welcomed their son. For some reason, reasons that many of us can now call good reasons, they kept the identity, the looks of their child, away from the prying eyes of social media. They concealed his face and kept it private. They would frequently take to social media to showcase photographs of themselves with their son, but they never slipped to ensure that his face was covered and kept away from prying eyes. I can bet right now they would wish they made it stay that way. Some months after this beautiful baby was born, I'm sure his parents must have thought, what the heck? We think it's a good time for us to share with the world this beautiful blessing that God has given us. And so they released photos of their family with the baby inclusive, his face revealed for the first time. When these photos were released and different blogs started sharing pictures of the baby, as is now the ugly norm, these comments about DNA, DNA started flooding the comment section. But we ignored them thinking that they were just small talks from Olori Brukus here and there and that they would fade away and fizzle with time. We were wrong. One particular troll stuck out. A Facebook user called Okoronkwa AGK. He wrote this on his Facebook page. This is the true face of Mercy Chinwa's child that she was hiding after giving birth. But the truth is that this little baby looks exactly like singer Nathaniel Bassi. Nothing anybody won't reason me, oh. This child is Nathaniel Bassi's baby. Just maybe there was a secret away match that occurred. Otherwise, how can we make empirical sense of this? But wait first, though. <laughs> this face looks very familiar. Is this not the same guy that defamed AY and Maya Doche, accusing me of sleeping with AY? This is the same guy, you. AY, you know I have the truth. You know I have the evidence. Should I start posting videos? Should I start posting voice record? Should I start posting so many write up? You guys are not blaming him, but you forgot that it was AY that slept with his wife. Another man slept with AY wife, and AY wife got pregnant. <laughs> Match for the DNA result. <laughs> If everything I'm saying is a lie, AY take me to court. I needed to train, I needed to make money so that I will not come back to Nigeria empty handed. So I decided to do that. So and I trained. Go to see that Nigeria are evil, Nigeria are bad. You go post content, they're not gonna like. But when you post evil news, you go see them, they go they comment, they like. Mm, Nigeria is evil. So I'm sorry. Uh, please. And I just posted the video, bam, the video boom. Bam, I have more followers. Bam, I still making money from it. At least I don't get more money. I go to pay for my strength. So this guy trolls and chases clouds and defames people for a living. That is the only kind of content that he can give. He lacks the mental ability to come up with an engaging conversation apart from exaggerated lies that would draw fake traffic. So that is what happened. And before you know it, trust the media. 
it preys on negative news. This post by this guy began spreading like wildfire. It became viral on Twitter, on Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. You can imagine their utter embarrassment, their pain, seeing their new baby pics mixed with another person's husband while accusing the wife of having sex with her colleague. I thought that children were off limits. The truth is that what some people do not understand is that freedom of speech is guaranteed, but freedom after speech, <laughs> that one is not guaranteed. You can't just go about defaming people, tarnishing their image, trolling their child, and spreading wickedness just because you have a phone and you have data. I came across this news just a few minutes before I started shooting this video, that Halima Abubakar has been sentenced by the courts to pay 10 million naira in damages to Apostle Suleiman for defaming him. It's possible that everything that that girl said about their relationship and everything that went down between between them is true, but the courts deal with facts. You do not just spill words anyhow. Anything that cannot be proved, you can be punished and get into very serious trouble for. Is this not what we are going through with Choma and Erisco? When she woke up that morning, she would never have imagined that her keyboard would have landed her in the kind of trouble that she has found herself in. The latest now is that the Nigerian police have flagged her on the watch list and has sent an official memo to the Nigerian immigration to deny her exit from Nigeria and arrest her on sight. Just a little line on the phone. You can't just sit back and accuse people of murder and accuse people of paternity fraud and accuse people of prostitution because you think you have freedom of expression. Even when we had our discussions on Sam Larry and Naira Mali, never for once were they called killers on this channel. We stated what we had evidence of, which is the bullying. You can't just come out and say this person killed this person, Wumi killed Mobad, Nathaniel Bassi slept with Mr. Chimo. Let us be guided with our utterances. Well, Nathaniel Bassi, through his attorneys, have petitioned the Inspector General of Police. They have asked the IGP to investigate and prosecute these five persons, five men, for criminal defamation and cyberbullying. My name is Peter Abraham from Fortress Link Law Partners. We went to the authorities to submit a petition on behalf of our client, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. In fact, the law does not understand what is a cruise in the sense that you are criminally defaming someone and you cannot hide behind a camera to say what you were doing was a cruise. Because if it was a cruise, you would have clearly made it you know, a cruise. But in this instance, they were very cut. This matter has now officially been charged to court. And these five men have been summoned by the courts to come before it to defend the allegations leveled against them. The main culprit, Agozi Okoronkwa AGK, this same man that defamed AY and came to apologize few hours after AY instituted an action against him, has come out once again, shedding tears and crying, begging for forgiveness. <laughs> So what do you think about this situation again? Some Christian brothers and sisters have advocated that to air is human. Nathaniel, Pastor Blessed, Messi Chinwo are all Christians and exemplary Christians. What kind of precedent do they want to set for the millions of Christians following them all over the world if they can't forgive a single offense? How then do they expect God to forgive them? They have pleaded that Messi Chinwo forgive this guy and that for this full grown man to be crying like this on social media he really has shown remorse and he is sorry while some other people have sworn that if mercy chin war or nathaniel bassi lets this guy off the hook again oh my god they will be so furious with them this man has to be taught a lesson this man and the likes of him have to be taught a lesson that assassinating someone's character is just like assassinating the person he needs to be made an example of these trolls that come out to spread false and fabricated stories about people what do you think about these two positions drop your comments and thoughts 
down in the comment section so guys yes we have come to the end of today's video if you're new here you're seeing my face for the first time or if you've been watching without subscribing don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a thumbs up drop all your comments down in the comment section and stay glued because there is so much more coming your way don't also forget to follow me on other socials tiktok and instagram same handle at nezaville thank you once again guys it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezaville i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye